Male nipple piercing consultation. What you should know before you get them done. Coming up next on Piercing Consultations by a Piercer, episode number six. So stick around. For those who are new to the channel and don't know me, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and I operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located right here, here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I've taught you a level of expertise that comes from me in the body piercing industry for well over 26 years. What are we going to talk about today, or what am I going to talk about? Because it's a one-sided conversation as usual. Um, I'm going to talk about male nipple piercings. Uh, this is kind of what I would say to you if you came into my studio and said, hey, I want to get my nipples pierced, and you were male. This is the things that I'd talk to you about. First thing I'd tell you is that the average shielding time on a male nipple piercing is anywhere from six months to a year during which time I'm going to suggest cleaning it twice a day using a sterile saline solution such as Nelmed's Piercing Aftercare twice daily for roughly about 5 to 10 minutes. Cross-contamination prevention. Common sense stuff. Wash your hands or you handle it. No oral contact or exchange of bodily fluids on near around the piercing until it's healed. Keeping your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels. Not submerging the piercing and bodies of water you can't control the quality of, which is everything but your own clean bathtub, which means no swimming. No. Uh-uh. No swimming until it's healed. Then after it's healed, it's fine. Keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. They're just germ magnets that drag it, all kinds of things into your bedding that you don't want there if you have an open wound. Then I'm going to have you fill out a waiver, and uh, generally, it's going to ask, or I'll ask you specific questions on any pre-existing health conditions that you may have that may cause issues or prolong healing, things like diabetes, hemophilia, uh, being anemic, any blood clotting issues, etc. Next, I'm going to ask you about medications, if you're on any type of medication that may impair blood clotting or cause unusual complication, or if you're on any controlled or uncontrolled substance that may impair blood clotting or cause unusual complications. Another thing we're going to talk about is any risks that are involved with this particular piercing. It isn't really a heavy wrist piercing. Um, there's a small risk of migration or rejection. That really depends on your anatomy, and I would talk about that probably during uh, the evaluation of your anatomy to see what's going to work best for you as far as jewelry, etc. I'm also going to ask you about any sensitivities that you have to any of the products that I may be using, things like... Um, betanine swabs or betanine or surgical scrubs, uh, surgical lube, of course, saline, but I don't think anybody's allergic to saline. I don't know if that's possible. Um, also, uh, any other products and of course the material that the jewelry is made out of, um, either implant grade surgical stainless steel, implant grade titanium, uh, 14 karat solid gold, not plated or filled or better. That's like the main types of jewelry that are used, possibly niobium, but it's not that common. Another thing I will put into this that really I don't generally always talk about is that this particular piercing is going to be sensitive longer than other piercings. Uh, you usually have a throbbing and aching, the immediate aftermath that will last anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. But this piercing is going to be a lot more sensitive to contact than other piercings are. You really need to isolate it. You do not want to sleep on the piercing. You want to sleep on your side of your back. That part I would mention with the sleeping because I just forgot to mention it. And then at that point, we would go through uh, picking out the jewelry, and etc. So that's a very brief version of a consultation. Some of the things that you should know before getting this piercing done. Um, if you haven't watched it already, you want to go ahead and check out the pros and cons video that I posted right before this one on male nipples. That covers a great deal more. Also, tomorrow, day after I post this one, I'm going to post an aftercare instructions video that is a lot more detailed about how to take care of the piercing during the healing process. If you found the video helpful, uh, edifying, uh, entertaining, 
Give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it because we like it when you like it. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscription and, and just punch. Let it know that you hit it, that notification bell, so that you're notified every single time we post something. If you like merch, you like T-shirts, you like swag, you like yoga pants, check out our, well, it's male nipples. I guess guys can wear yoga pants, can't they? Leggings? Especially if they're in a 80s metal cover band. Anyway, or, you know, they just like the glam rock. Check out the link in the description. We have various different designs, various different colors, various different products with the holidays coming up. A um, few things you can get for somebody that you know that likes tattoos and piercings. Till next time, here's hoping only piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for watching. Uh, take care of one another. Stay safe. Wash your goddamn hands and wear your mask. And we will see you on the next video.